one of the joys of growing older is the pleasure of looking back and recognizing many of the coincidences that have added richness to our lives. Brother Thomas wrote, perhaps we are made to look back just for the experience of being amazed as, as much by what we have done as what we can still do. In 2010, while in Japan with gallery patrons and friends, we visited the town of Mashiko because of its very strong Minge pottery presence. At the time we were working with the art of Tatsuzo Shimaoka, Ken Matsuzaki, and the Hamada three generations. All were Mashiko based and all were connected to the Minge or the art of the people movement, which honors function and form as well as in the Japanese phrase, yonobi, or the beauty of use. After hosting our group at his studio, Ken Matsuzaki kindly wandered with us through the small village and alerted us to the art of Yoshinori Hagiwara. We visited an exhibition of his work on the main street of the pottery village. We loved his work and purchased some of it, which Ken helped ship to us. We met Yoshinori and were delighted to invite him for an exhibition at the gallery in late 2010. This was the beginning of a superb journey. Yoshinori has managed with each new body of work to develop new forms and glazes while remaining true to the Minge tenets of function and form. He is a fine example of how limits or strictures can provide not only challenges, but opportunities for new horizons. The superior level of making, making allows him to create new forms and richer, richer glazes with each exhibition. And it has been an amazing joy. Brother Thomas's words again, I love this phrase, what is old and beautiful is always new. And what is beautiful and new is always old. Let us remember these words as together with Professor Andrew Maskey, we share Yoshinori's new work with you. In so many wonderful ways, our lives have been enriched by our friendship with Andrew and his amazing wife, Kwa Jing. Andrew has been our academic resource for three of our gallery sponsored journeys to Japan. And he has written many enlightening essays for catalogs and books. His contributions exemplify our commitment to educate our supporters so that they can become more knowledgeable about the art and with that, even happier to acquire it. We've asked Andrew to lead the conversation with Yoshinori along with Dear Mugi Hanao, who has consistently and generously enabled our communication with all the artists that we work with in Japan. Whenever Japanese artists have visited us in Boston in the past, she has welcomed them so graciously. We hope that together with her, we will welcome both Yoshinori and Aiko to Boston in a couple of years. So Mugi, thank you for everything that you've done over these many, many years. Critical to, yep. critical to our discussion will be again, Brother Thomas's words that I think apply so wonderfully to Yoshinori's work. Thomas wrote, it is unnatural to forget how to play. And clearly Yoshinori's work embedded this visual joy in his art. Lastly, Rose will describe a small contest with a prize to be announced at the end of our time together, which was to create a haiku inspired by one of his works. So now to Andrew and our symphony in persimmon. Andrew, thank you so much. Thank you, Bernie. Um, it's a real pleasure to join all of you and to talk a little bit with um, Mr. Hagiwara about his work and about the background of uh, ceramics in Mashiko and the inspirations that he have uh, enabled him to make such beautiful uh, ceramics. Um, 
、皆様に参加していただいて、大変光栄に思っております。えー、今回はですね、えーと、民芸との関係、それから益子におけるその歴史を含めて、えー、萩原様が一体どうやってそのような美しい作品を作り出していったのか、作り出すことができているのかということについて、皆さん、あの萩原さんに質問をしたいと思っております。はい、わかりました。And we have the first slide, Rose. <clears throat> so, as Bernie mentioned in his introduction,、um, oh. Minge is a, an approach to、uh, craft that、um, means the art of the people. That's the literal meaning of Minge.、Um, and it began in the 1920s. Primarily as a construction、um, and、uh, an approach developed by、uh, the philosopher and aesthetician Yanagi Soetsu.、Um, and、um, over a period of some years, Yanagi came up with、uh, a number of attributes that he felt defined、uh, Minge. Uh, the first Minge were、um, old pieces from the past that Yanagi identified from the material culture of、uh, Japan in previous centuries.、Um, after,、uh, and the, the、uh, attributes are listed here on the screen,、um, he felt that、um, the really wonderful things. Um, that existed in Japanese material culture were made by anonymous artisans.、Um, and these artisans worked、uh, in a mode、um, in which they made things in quantity by hand. So part of the beauty came from making objects such as ceramics,、um, not only by hand, but by making lots of them. So these are not,、uh, these are not, were not artists. They were people who had to produce things in large quantities simply to, to make a living.、Um, as a result, those things were typically、uh, inexpensive.、Um, they weren't highly valued. They didn't have a signature. They weren't,、uh, the makers were not、um, famous, although. Um, I should mention that the, the, the term unknown craftsman is、um, really a misnomer because these craftspeople were known to their audience. They were known in their local villages or towns.、Um, the people who came to acquire their,、um, their products、uh, knew who they were. They weren't really unknown craftsmen. They're simply unknown to us today. They were unknown to Yanagi because they didn't sign their things.、Um, those、uh, products were used primarily by ordinary people. They were,、um, they were not expensive. They, were not,、um, they weren't commissioned in the way that we think artworks were commissioned, although、um, local people did、um, often. Uh, make special orders for things that they,、um, that they needed.、Um, uh, but they were,、uh, they were not expensive and they were used by ordinary people.、Um, the objects、uh, Yanagi felt should be functional in daily life.、Um, in general, they're not sculpture, they're not pictures to put on the wall, they are things that had a use. That was an important aspect of、uh, Minge.、Um, and he added something that、um, is、uh, kind of、uh, special to Japan.、Uh, he felt they should be representative of the region in which they were made. So they were really local products,、um, sort of um, um, connecting to our current bi local、uh, movements that we have.、Um, these were objects that. That were special to an area that reflected the needs of the people who lived in that area and the natural materials that existed,、uh, existed there.、Uh, 
Um, so these are all things that Yanagi identified in the material culture, the craft objects that existed from the past in his own time. And he began writing about these things and collecting them and also um, making connections with like-minded uh, individuals. And um, among the uh, people he connected with who had a similar sort of um, uh, interest in these objects of the past was a potter named um, Hamada uh, Shoji, um, often referred to in, his, in the English order, Shoji Hamada. And uh, Hamada was a young um, ceramic uh, maker. Um, he had actually worked in a, um, in a rather scientific um, ceramic setting when he was training, but um, maybe because of that, he was attracted to uh, the ordinary objects, the ordinary ceramics of the past, and wanted to recreate um, or create things in a similar sort of mode. He had a great respect for the Minge potters of the past. Um, and so uh, Yanagi, uh, along with Hamada, and others developed this idea of, of minge. Um, and then Hamada and uh, several other craftspeople, which um, the number grew over time to, um, to um, include uh, a variety of different types of contemporary craftsmen, uh, mostly men at the time, began to make new items in the mode of old minge. And those people essentially created contemporary minge, what often is known as minge. And Hamada moved to a town uh, north of Tokyo out um, in the mountains that uh, many of you have heard of named Mashiko, where there was um, an existing um, ceramic tradition, although it was a rather minor tradition at the time and Hamada created a, um, his studio there, uh, built uh, kilns, brought together um, old um, uh, farmhouses and other buildings, and created a complex that today uh, survives, fortunately, as, um, uh, as a wonderful museum there on the outskirts of Mashiko. And well, during that... Let me just mention one thing sure. mm -hmm. from that. The next exhibition is actually an exhibition at the gallery of the three generations. And our intention is to have a webinar focused on a visit to exactly what you're describing, the Hamada compound. So yes, the three gen generations of the Hamada family, yes. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So yes. So to show what you're talking about. Yes, so uh, be sure to um, be yes. sure to log on for that next month. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, June. Yes. Okay. Um, so um, Hamada created his uh, his studio there, um, but uh, before Hamada arrived, um, our um, current artist uh, craftsman, uh, Mr. Hagiwara's family, was already in Mashiko. Um, he, uh, they were among the um, ceramic producing families there in Mashko when, um, when um, Mr. Hamada arrived, when they were um, creating the ideas of what would become the contemporary Minge movement. And so I thought I would like, I would ask uh, Mr. Hagiwara if his family, uh, if he knows about any connections that his family may have had with, um, with uh, the uh, Hamada Shoji or his family um, back in the early 20th, uh, probably the middle part of the 20th century. えっと、あの、今あの、民芸の歴史をまず、と、民芸の特徴ですとかをずっとあの、質問の1なんですけれども、そこを説明していただいて、それであの、浜田昭治さんが
そうですね、うん、うちはもう,そうです、ね、1980、1874年にはマスコに来てたんで、明治7年です。で、その浜,、はい、浜田庄司さんとの関係といいますか、浜田家との関係、萩原家と浜田家との関係というのは、はいえー、とその頃からずっと続いていらしたっていうことでしょうか。関係っていうのは直接はあまりなくて、はははあの私自体あ、うちありますよね、はいはいあの、浜田庄司が益子に来たときに、まず家を作る前なんですけど、はい、うちの隣の農家があるんですよ、今、本当にうちの隣なんですけど、はいはい、そこの農家の納屋っていうか、なんか荷物置き場の2階がなんか住居になってて、そこに浜田が住んでたみたいなんですよ。でそうちの横の横道を通ってああのまた隣の佐久間宗太郎がまっていうのはまた隣なんですけどそこに、はい、あの毎日通ってたってうちのおじいちゃんから聞いてますね。はあ。はい、so, when he, <coughs> えーは、Mr. Hagiwara's family has been in Moscow since 1874. So, when、uh, Mr. Ha- Mr. Hamada, Shoji Hamada moved to Moscow, They didn't have exact、uh, direct connection at that point, but he, Mr. Ha- Mr. Hamada moved into a barn of his,、uh, of a farmhouse, which is right next to where Mr. Hagiwara is living now. And then there's the second floor of the barn was available. So he, Mr. Shoji Hamada moved into that. Uh, space, and that was his living space. And he sort of walked to his、uh, studio from there back and forth. That's what Mr.、Um, Hagiwara's grandparent, grandfather actually told him about that. So, so Mr.、Uh, Mr. Hagiwara's、um, grandfather was actually Hamada Shoji's first neighbor in Mashko. おじいさまが浜田庄司さんのお隣さんだったということですね、最初のお隣さんというか。そうですね、はい。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。そうですね。Um, which of those does he consider to be most important to his work? It's a good one. Maski Kyu's no hokara no minge no tokcho ni tsuke, iro listoga at the Nihongo no listo mo okristan deskedomo. So no naka de Ichiban so no Hagiwara samo ga ju yo da to mo are the ten wa do no ten ni na imas deso. Watashi jitai, ano. 初め焼き物始めた時はもうなんとか民芸とかそういう感じで職人的な仕事に憧れっていうのもあるんですけど、まあ、釜焼き職人とかって本当は俺私の憧れは釜焼き職人っていう、うん、憧れて入ったんですよでだから14からもう焼き物っていうか釜焼き始まってたんですけどただもう上り釜っていうのが主流じゃなくなってるじゃないですかでも始まった二十何年前なんですけどもう30年ぐらい前からもう徐々にその職人っていうのが本当に減っちゃいまして、はいはい、もう個人経営というか全部1から10まで土から何から自分で作らなくちゃならないっていうふうになってきた時代なんですかねなんでもともとはあの、まあ、日用品を大量に作って安く売って大量生産は、まあ、自分的にはやってたんですけどあの30ぐらいからちょっとあの松崎健さんとか僕が書いてこっていう作家活動の方に誘われて、はい、まあ今度ちょっとその職人からこう作家活動の方にちょっと変えたのが30ぐらいからですかね。で、その後パッカーさんとかからのギャラリーで始まったっていうのが、まあ、自分的には、まあ、もともとその考え方は本当に、まあ、いいとは思うんですけど、まあ、実際に今、重要だと思うのは今、ちょっと離れちゃったんで、まあ、日曜食器とかを作ってるぐらいですかね。はい The reason why he got into this world of, of pottery is that he really wanted to be a craftsman, meaning that's no name craftsman of、um, you, uh, firing kiln. 
he really liked to fire kill. So that's why he wanted to start his career when he was 14 years old. He was he started already uh, firing a kill for everybody. And so he that was his important point that he wanted to be a craftsman, which could, as Ms. Uh, Professor says, that it's like no name. There's no no famous name name involved. But of course, like he when he started, that was the beginning of the era that everybody is starting to do a lot of things by himself, like starting to uh, develop clay and then glaze and everything else by himself, which means that he turned out to be an artist. So like everybody's trying to be an artist. That was when he get into this world. So he's being craftsmanship, craftsman was not really that long because every the, the era shifted towards a porter with names. But he still wants to be a um, craftsman, but he, of course he had to start everything. He had to do a, um, a develop a clay and a glaze by himself. And then during the time that he was developing his way of doing it, he met, uh, of course, Mr. Matsuzaki and other potters with uh, like artist potters, then he was sort of shifted toward that world. But his base is still craftsmanship completely. And he, of course, he, right. at that time, he was making a lot of um, ordinary use uh, pottery and then a lot of them, the quant in quantity. But now he's toward, uh, he's now a, a artist but his base is still a craftsmanship. Can, can I, I, I'd like to expand on that a little bit too, Mugi, yeah. thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so one thing that people often don't, uh, don't understand about traditional ceramics in Japan uh, is that um, they were generally made well into the 20th century um, cooperatively. So people would work together and um, in a village where ceramics was an important um, uh, business or um, um, past um, uh, profession, uh, people would help each other um, and also take on part-time work uh, workers to help with specific um, tasks that required more than one person. Um, and that's really how Mr. Hagiwara started. So he was saying that he was a kamayaki, which is a, um, a kiln fireman. Um, back when they had the uh, lots of wood burning um, kilns in Mashiko and they were um, uh, making um, rather inexpensive, um, uh, tablewares and jars and that sort of thing. Not things that would be in an exhibition, but that people would would buy. Um, but they were made in, in quantity. So they, they fulfilled many of those attributes of uh, minge, um, except perhaps they weren't, um, there was less of a, an aesthetic focus. I mean, they were just um, purely functional um, and maybe not always that, uh, that attractive. But he was working as a kiln fireman. So he would go when, when a particular workshop would have a firing, he would be um, one of the people who was there on shifts to um, feed fuel into the kiln. And that was his main job. He wasn't a maker uh, at all. But there were lots of kilns, so he could find work to do that. But as um, as sort of the ceramics boom um, developed in Japan in the 1960s, um, 70s, 80s, uh, a lot of those cooperative kilns became um, more mechanized and moved to larger cities, um, and um, the the village potteries that worked cooperative, cooperatively started to die out. And so he didn't have work anymore as, uh, as a fireman, but of course he knew a lot about 
uh, ceramic production from being around it uh, all the time, even if he wasn't making things himself. And so he was inspired by the, the burgeoning studio potter movement where people, rather than working cooperatively and sort of um, bringing on part-time workers, worked uh, mostly in their own household or individually um, to, uh, to locate their clay and to do the throwing and fill the kiln and fire the kiln and sort of do that all themselves, just like studio potters around the world do today. And so um, after meeting um, Mr. Matsuzaki, who had already begun um, as, a, uh, as an apprentice of, um, of uh, Mr. Shimaoka, who was a living national treasure, uh, Mr. Uh, Hagiwara decided to try his hand at being a studio potter. Um, but it's really interesting to me to see that the works that he chose to make, even though he's quite humbly saying, oh, I'm not, you know, I've, I'm not really a Minge potter. Um, I make tablewares, that's true. Um, but in fact, uh, when you look at his, his pieces, they really do fulfill many of the attributes of traditional Minge. Uh, even though, of course, they are sold with his name. He's, he doesn't, uh, he makes, uh, you know, of course makes no claim to be an unknown craftsman. Um, but his pieces really have uh, the same sort of warmth that one sees in, um, uh, in the works of Minge and Minge movement potters, including uh, Hamada Shoji. Let me add, uh, mm -hmm. if I can, Andrew, just a second that- sure. um, the other side of it, which is I'm not a maker, I'm just an appreciator. But the ultimate sense of delight that comes out of his having discovered his own journey, meaning first as a fireman, then as somebody adjacent to it, and then beginning, there's a freshness to his work that doesn't come out of a rigid, strictured academic tradition. And it just, ha and the best art that we've dealt with grows out of the soul and spirit of the maker, mm -hmm. unrelated to whether or not it's part of A movement or a B movement. And his work has, in the past 11 years that we've known him, evolved and grown in a wrong word, unself-conscious manner that has made it even more delightful, which, um, you know, you, I was in the gallery today and holding a piece of his, just a plate, because we have the entire dinner set at home. And just holding it in your hand, there's a sense of him as the maker uh, that gets communicated in his joy and spirit in virtually every piece that we've had over the past 11 years. Yeah. あの、作品っていうのにはその、やはり um, I think we have uh, another, um, we have some images, Rose, 
we can look at. Um, Mr. Hagiwara um, was first, um, his first works were quite surprising to me in that he used an, a, a, a rather unusual glaze, a glaze that's known as kaki or persimmon glaze. That's, it, and it's a, an iron um, infused glaze, which has a shiny, um, a shiny surface. Um, like we see here, it looks quite red. Um, persimmons are orange, so it's sort of an orange red. That's why it has that name. Um, but um, this is a piece by Hamada Shoji. Um, so you'll be seeing more pieces like this. Uh, and there's a, a, another, uh, another piece I think we have by Mr. Hamada. Yeah. So that area in the, the lines that you see, those are also basically um, um, a khaki type of glaze. Um, although, they're, although it's brushed on, it's basically, it's basically iron on iron. So the black glaze is also iron, but the reddish glaze is, a, is a, an even more intense iron. Um, and uh, uh, Mr. Hamada, um, Hamada Shoji used this on some of his pieces um, and um, created some really beautiful pieces with that. Um, but it was, a, you know, um, uh, I don't know, uh, a minority of his pieces. But Mr. Hagiwara um, originally had almost all of his pieces using this khaki glaze. So um, we can see a few of those pieces. And I wanted, um, there's another Hamada piece with his sugarcane motif there. And you can see how the black and the red are together. That's just how it fired the intensity of the uh, the iron glaze where there was more iron, it turned red when there was less iron, which would be the ratio of, of uh, ash to iron in the glaze, it turned black. Um, and the design that you see was of course a wax re resist that was painted on by Hamada Shoji himself. Andrew, just uh, let me point out mm -hmm. from my perspective that one of the strange uh, relationships for me between their two works, not only in the glaze that you're talking about, is that this piece is probably from 1960, 65, and it feels like he made it today. And the mm -hmm. sense of spontaneity that's in this piece is something that I see very much in Hagiwara's pieces. That even though the form is a regular form and there has structure to it, the decoration remains um, almost spontaneous and clearly was for Hamada-san and uh, Hagiwara's pieces for me, and we'll look at the number of them further on, really have the same sense of joy that comes through in seeing a piece like this. And it could have come out of the kiln yesterday and I'd say, wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, but the interesting thing is that, that the way that Mr. Hagiwara uses the kaki glaze is it's he's not copying Hamada in any way except just using that glaze. He has developed his own really amazing techniques. I mean, really, I was really astounded when I saw that, and I'm, I continue to be when I see you know new pieces that he's done. Agreed. Can we see the next piece? This, that's another of... Hamada. Yeah, yeah, it really <laughs> with is. some overglaze enamel. There we go. There you go. There's a piece by Mr. Hagiwara. So I wanted to ask um, what attracted him about, um, about the, uh, the khaki glaze um, when, he, when he first started working as a potter and making his own pieces. Sorry, you, you're breaking up, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I wanted, I wanted to ask Mugi, um, yes. ask Mr. Hagiwara, what was it that inspired him to start yes. working with kaki glaze? えっと、あの、はい。オッケー。今あの、え、浜田さんのあの浜田先生の書き
、書き絵は同じでも、使い方が全く違うと、あのマスキー教授と、まあ、パッカーさんがおっしゃってるんですが、この書き絵を使い始めた理由というのは、どういうことでしょうか。あ私あ、書き絵を使い始めた理由っていうのは、あの自分、子どもの時に、あの上り釜焼いてた時に、書き絵のかけら見つけたことあるんですよ。上り釜の後ろまで。で、はい、それを見たときに、すごい綺麗だなって純粋に思ったのがあって、それずっと上り釜の上に乗っけといたんですね。で、ちょうどその時代、柿湯、黒湯っていうのが、もうちょっとブーム去っちゃいまして、自分の子供の頃、はい、うちでも焼けるんですけど、柿とか黒って本当に焼いてなかったんですよ。はい、で、まあ、その頃本当に民芸店がうちに買いに来るんですけど、あの庭家っていうのやって。あのあそこのお店の民芸店がやっぱり10軒ぐらい集まってこう親方の人がそれでこうなんですか釜出しの時にみんな買い取ってくれるっていう時でも,もう柿と黒は売れないからって言われててもうひたすら全然作ってなかったんですねで実際自分柿と黒とかが本当に好きだったんですけどまあしばらくそれがねあの、まあ、売れないから作っても売れないっていうあれだったんですけどまあそのこのから少し経ってその作家活動を始めた頃にやっぱりそのいいものはいいっていう評価してくれる人が出てきた頃からですかね書きをひたすらあの始めたっていうのを。ああ。Climbing kiln,、uh, he found a piece of、uh, broken potter, pottery with、uh, persimmon glaze on it. And he somehow purely thought that was so beautiful. So he picked it up and he put it on top of the、uh, climbing kiln. So he just kept it there. And <clears throat> when he starts、um, being more aware, Everybody at that point,、uh, nobody was buying、uh, any pottery with either black glaze or persimmon glaze. So the shop who came to,、um, to the climbing kiln when the firing is over, so they came in and they p i c k up the pieces and then they, buy, they bought those pieces at that point for their shops. They say、uh, we don't buy、um, either persimmon glaze or black glaze because nobody buying it. So at that point, they could, they have、uh, capacity, they have technique to fire,、uh, to create a persimmon glaze powder and then black glaze powder, but nobody wanted it. So they haven't done any of, they didn't do any of those for a while.、And、then, Because they can make it, but they, nobody buying it. So, therefore, nobody, like, why do they have to make it? But after a while, he turned out to be a artist with,、uh, with the help of Mr.、Um, Matsudaki. He is, some people started to feel that whatever is good is still good. And then they started to、uh, reevaluate, reappreciate、uh, grades. The persimmon glaze or black glaze. And then he himself really liked it for a long, long time. So he started to experiment. And that's why he started to focus on those two glaze. Yes, thank you,、uh, Mugi. And, and I think that、um, Mr. Hagiwara has really transformed this genre. If you indeed, if you look at historical ceramics that have this glaze, Um, there, aren't, there aren't many of them. Of course, what he was talking about was you know, the second half of the 20th century.、Uh, but old ceramics、um, rarely use this glaze for anything but the most、um, basic objects、um, uh, jars and very utilitarian pieces.、Um, and in fact, not that many of them. Found their way into、um, you know, the J- Japan、uh, Minge Museum because、um, they, re- they were really quite plain. But Mr. Hagiwara was able to find ways to combine 
the persimmon glaze and the black glaze and create patterns in these really uh, uh, amazing innovative ways that no one had ever done before. So it's, it's really, um, he's really uh, owed um, tremendous kudos for, for identifying this glaze um, because of his love for it and then pursuing it and successfully making the beautiful pieces that, um, such as the one that we see on the screen uh, here. I think we have some few others as well. Yeah, look at that. It, it, but, but let's go back to the young one just for a second because there's a simplicity of form, the graciousness of the mouth itself that invites you or me or anyone to want to use it. Mm. And that combination then is enlivened by the patterns, if you will, or the freedom of the patterns of the persimmon glaze laid on top of the black. And then you get the vaporization around the lip that creates a definition of the lip itself and the circle. Just, I mean, there's actually one to my left in our home that is even larger than that. And it was the first piece of his we saw that we bought when we were in Mashiko at that small gallery. And they just hold up, just visually. There's a the thing that I said about um, Shoji Hamada's work, they remain fresh. And here, black becomes a positive rather than a negative. It has energy to it, the contrast uh, in it, and then going back to just the simplicity of a form that is kind of an eternal sense of beauty. It doesn't need to be complicated. There's no other um, programmatic. It's just what it is. And what a joy to just have his work as part of the gallery. And it's wonderful that you articulated the kind of evolution of his work. So I'm sorry, we can go to the next slide, Rose, but I just wanted to say that was among the earlier pieces of his that we got. Um, and this is from the most recent collection. え、ま、あの、え、マスキキョージはその非常に革新的なパターンというのを作り上げて、え、そのパターンを作りにな、なった萩原さんの作品っていうのは、見ていると、um, yeah, so these are wonderful. I guess, Bernie, you have a set of these that you love to use. The next slide. Next slide, okay. Uh, yeah, beautiful. And as he's, as his work has developed, <clears throat> Mr. Hagiwara has added uh, added elements um, little by little to his pieces um, while maintaining um, a lot of the uh, persimmon glaze. Uh, but here we have a um, here we have a white glaze uh, or sort of a cream colored glaze. Is this uh, nuka nuka desu ka? Kore ano shiroi no hou wa. Namijiro desu. Oh, namijiro. Namijiro. It's a, it's a glaze called uh, called Namijiro um, that he's used here. Uh, next one, um, copper copper infused glaze here. These um, on these bowls uh, as well, and then um, yeah, the black glaze um, with the Namijiro and the um, kaki. Um, yeah, and nobody's making. Nobody makes 
pieces like these. Um, they're not reminiscent of anybody. They are completely original with Mr. Hagiwara. Um, it's really quite incredible to me um, as, a, as a scholar of Japanese ceramics. And every one of them makes you feel that you want to use it. Um, and the other interesting thing is that uh, I've seen a few of them in use in people's homes where they will put on it or they'll put, it just seems to welcome um, being used um, in such a lovely way. And for me, that what I remarked before about the um, sort of dish or bowl of shoji hamada with the um, rice straw on it, and then look at these, these are all linear patterns, but every one of them isn't with a ruler, they're freehand, they feel spontaneous. And it's this wonderful kind of, if you were to frame them on a wall, it would be a wonderful just exhibit of the uh, individual pieces of like Joseph Albers meets um, Hagiwara in Japan. Another interesting thing of, about uh, Mr. Hagiwara's work uh, to me is when you look at Minge, when you look at old Minge, and usually when you look at contemporary Minge movement pieces by living or recently deceased um, ceramic artists, potters. Um, one word, one adjective that you would not apply to most of that work is elegant. Um, and somehow mm. Hagiwara can sort of check all the boxes of Minge and yet create pieces like these that have a real sense of not only being handmade, but being elegant. Um, and that's something I think is very, uh, very special.全く yeah. I would add to that, um, Andrew, just briefly that the elegance comes out of from my precision, my sort of point of view. Um, they basically are unpretentious. And so the rare combination of something that is elegant and not pretending to be elegant makes them feel even more inviting and authentic. Mm -hmm. で、so here I'd like to um, bring up one last thing that, um, that, that Bernie has talked about, that Brother Thomas talked about, um, that I think is important for, for artists, um, and that's the idea um, of of play and enjoyment in, um, in the act of creating, of making work. Um, so I'd like to ask um, Mr. Hagiwara um, for a final question about the, the role of play in his work. Oh, あそび。最後の、そう、えっと、あそ、うん、あそびごっこ、ごめんなさい、なんかちょっとこれが。えっと、最後の一番、えっと、質問上の一番最後の質問に<笑> 
、えー、萩原さんの作品には非常に出ているかと思うんですが、それについてちょっと説明をお願いできればということなんですけれども、はい、あの遊び心っていうよりも、ほぼ遊びなんですね、作り自体が自分の、もう今となっては。はじめは職人的にあの仕事をひたすら安いものをたくさん作って、もうなんですかね、もう。うん、1年間に1万とか同じものだけ作ってたんですよ。そうするとあの自分が本当に憧れて入った釜焼きなんていうのもできなくてあもうあの間に合わないんで電気釜を入れたりガス釜を買ったりはしたんですよね。それでなんかこのままずっと同じことをやって注文ねひたすらやり続けてもなんか自分が初めて焼き物を始めたきっかけみたいなのからかなり離れてきちゃって。でそそのの時にちょうどそのケンさんとかあの、まあ、先輩とかから誘われた作家活動っていうのもなんか自由で遊びがある好きなものを作って売れなくてもいいぐらいの考えでやるっていう仕事をにこう誘われてそういう面白さを知っちゃったんで今となってはもう土を作りから何から楽しんでやってる感じなんですよね。なんでうんもうあの、うん、なんか全てがまああのなんか遊びの延長線上で仕事っていう感じではなくやってるんで、まあ、それがちょっと出てるのかなとは思うんですけど。はい、えっと、When I started、um, working as a, a potter, a sort of the craftsman, I basically I try to create the same pieces over and over and over again because you have to sell them the same pieces. And in a sort of inexpensive way. So some, sometimes I made maybe、um, 10,000, tens of thousands of, of same pieces per year. And then when I started to do that, then I, could, I didn't have time to do firing myself, which is one of the reasons, the main reason that I wanted to get into this world. Fire,、um, fire craftsman, kiln,、uh, kiln fire, firing craftsman, which I didn't have time to do at all. Because I didn't have time, I started to、um, use、uh, electric kiln or gas kiln just to catch up with my pieces to create in the fire. But then I realized that I, like, what am I doing here? This is not the reason I got into this world. I am not enjoying it at all. That's what I felt. So, at, around that time, Mr. Matsuzaki invited me to go into this uh, pottery um, artist side of this、um, pottery, which basically allows me to do whatever I want in a, whatever way I want. And I started to develop my own clay and then glaze. And then, so at this point, I enjoyed every single aspect of it. It was free and it was sort of playful. So it's not even, for me, it's not a job anymore. It's everything is a play for me, everything is enjoyable. And that, and then I, this is why I sort of made me realize. This is why I got into this world. So it's not right now, it's not even my job.、Um, we did have、um, one question that was sent in from a viewer,、um, which asked about the, the origin of Ms., Mr. Hagiwara's black glaze. Could you ask him quickly about that? Okay. It's the, it's the, 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 matte, the, matte, bla- the matte black glaze. だからあのくすんだ黒のグレーあの黒いうなんですけどもそれはどこ、はい、えっ、ー、ともともとはどこから作られてあ,あれはどこでちょうどあの取れた自分の家であのちょっと土が掘れるんですよ粘土が出るんですけどそれをあお家のご実家の、はい、あ庭から掘った土で何か釉薬にならないかなっていうやつで。あのテストしたら結構なんか黒マットになったんで、まあ、ちょっとかけてみようかなと思って、uh-huh. はい、今回新しく。Uh-huh. <笑> so, it, yes, there was a, a area in, in my own garden, in my own yard that you can、uh, dig and then use it as a glaze. So I wanted to 
see if it works. And then, then I tested it and, and it turned out to be a pretty good matte black at that point. So that's why I used it. So sometimes accidents are not a bad thing and using things in your immediate world, but the underlying aspect of both things he mentioned, namely to be a craftsperson, a fireman, and then to be an artist, seem to fit comfortably with him now. Um, and it's been an amazing, for us, just an amazing journey because it's been 11 years since we first met his work. But also, it is so generous of him to also credit uh, Ken Matsuzaki and Ken's commitment to him as an artist and maker. Um, so the combination of the art itself and the underlying friendship that they have had has enabled him. In fact, the couple of pieces, Rosa at the end, the Johan pieces are, are um, in a way very much um, related to the relationship with Ken. And the Johan notion of transformation is part of Ken's vocabulary, manifested very differently in Hagiwara's, but nonetheless, um, very nice to find the kind of openness and generosity of sharing uh, that their relationship represents. So it all together fits in a very uh, organic and meaningful way for which I think we all are grateful um, for sure. Rose has to um, choose or has chosen the um, winning haiku uh, and the piece that um, was inspired or inspired it. Yes, so um, this is the piece that it was modeled off of. Um, and the haiku is by Nakoto Takayanagi. Um, and it reads, sleek, sleek onyx glazed plate Rese resembling cherry tree bark reminds me of home. So congratulations to Naoko. Um, and you will get um, a single flower vase, a beautiful piece. Um, high competition, I've got to say. Um, a couple of people even in the gallery were like throwing their names in the ring. So congratulations on that. で、あの、この表彰されたっていう、なんかその、このグレーズ、あの、有薬で、あの、桜の木の幹を思い出し、それによってその記憶自分の故郷を思い出したというような意味の俳句をお作りになった方が、え、見事、優勝なさったということです。